Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you my new rendering techniques I learned while using my OC Lulu as an example. So, nothing crazy here, I'm just doing my typical setup of having a folder that is specifically for, line, for uh, the sketch process. Um, I do a head, which is something that I've learned how to make through years of practice. I wish I could give you a tip or trick that makes drawing heads easier but that really is just practice in my personal opinion. There's a big jump here because I forgot to hit record, but basically what we're doing here is we're doing different colors than I usually do. We are focusing mainly on muted colors. Um, I really wish I had recorded more from the sketch, but it was one of those situations where you go up, you go to the bathroom, then you forget to uh, uh, hit record once you start doing it, and then you only find out you weren't recording whenever you look up and you're like, oh god! <laughs> <laughs> so, oops, but um, yeah, so technically this is my OC Lulu who is kind of just like a dog-like character. Um, in terms of proportions, I didn't get them right on the first try. Uh, the hair is a bit too tall, the leash doesn't bend naturally, it's kind of off, but the idea is solid. Now, when starting with muted colors, it's really important to uh, plan everything out. Um, and having a good reference for real life. The, the goal for this artwork was more of a rainy day looking uh, artwork. So I'm basically painting on top of a multiply layer, which is not what I typically do, but I did it for this one, which uh, ended up getting really good results because all the colors are very desaturated to kind of fit that cloudy look. So I would recommend when picking colors to have a really good reference in front of you for like a cloudy day or a very uh, dimly lit room. I did a lot of tonal curve here, but I didn't really like the colors I was dealing with. So I had to go in and like fix it later. I wanted the eyes to be the most piercing thing about this artwork. So they're very bright and vivid green while the rest of the character is very subdued and subtle in terms of its colors. Very desaturated. There's another jump here where I did the background and forgot to hit record. Again, I'm really sorry. But um, now we're onto the line art, which is where I like to refine everything. The point of line art isn't to um, necessarily look pretty. It's to refine and enhance what's already there. So when you're doing lines, your goal is precision and not necessarily um, sketchiness. But I am really, really proud of this artwork. Um, I feel like it's another leap forward in terms of my rendering and how I do um, color. Because I've been doing really saturated for a long time and I wanted to kind of step outside of that comfort zone and really push my knowledge of color. And that was tricky because um, originally the skin was too saturated, the, uh, the colors of the hair were too saturated, and I had to find, kind of find that balance using Control u which brings up the hue and saturation, and playing with that to kind of get the correct look and vibe. Also, I did like a sweater with kind of like a braided aesthetic, which um, I'm getting better at braids, but man, they're not fun to draw. <laughs> Um, I, I actually don't enjoy drawing braids just because they aren't fun for me. They're more tedious than fun. But that doesn't mean we get to ignore the things we don't like in art. To all my younger viewers out there, I know that you are turning on the fact that your age is 18 to 25. I know it's not true. I know some of you are younger. So I'd l I would like to point out that when your art teacher tells you to draw realism, he or she is not being mean. If you understand real life and study from real life photos, you can apply that to your anime and make it look a lot better. Because anime is simplified realism. Please, 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 I'm asking you. If, you're, if your art teacher tells you to draw realism, it may not be fun, but it is insanely important. So please listen to them. They have your best interest in mind. This comes from someone who used to really hate drawing realism too. I didn't realize till I was an adult and I started learning more just how important real life study is. So that is what I did for this artwork. I had a picture of a cloudy day and I kind of tried to eyeball the colors and get them right. So whenever they have you painting fruit or still life or doing perspective courses, 
Don't ignore them. They're all important. They are trying to teach you the fundamentals of art. And I'll say this so that it makes more sense to you. The fundamentals, the reason why they're so important is they are the building blocks to your skill as an artist. If you build with a good foundation and you start to build up skill over time. So let's say, for example, you hit a roadblock in your artwork. It feels like you've hit a wall. You can't get any better and it's frustrating. That is usually a sign that you need to return to the fundamentals. Every single time I start to struggle with my art or hit an art block, that is my, basically it is the moment in time when it makes me realize I have to go back and I have to study the fundamentals again because usually that is almost always the case that that is the reason why you've hit a, a wall in your growth as an artist. So if you Google uh, art fundamentals, there are a lot of really, really good YouTube channels more than there were when I was a kid and I was in high school trying to learn art. YouTube hadn't really had that many um, good art tutorials online. It was all websites that you had to pay to access. We truly do live in the best time in terms of learning to become an artist because there's so much amazing free information. In fact, um, if I forget, don't let me forget, but I will pin a comment um, on this video to show you amazing channels that teach the fundamentals of art and I promise you will learn so much. Um, I'm subscribed to a few incredibly talented teachers here on YouTube and I would love nothing more than to share them with you because it is a treasure trove of such important and useful information. So we're getting to the point where we're reaching the end in terms of uh, the line art and I'm really proud of the lines on this one. I think they turned out really good, even though they kind of disappear in all the dark tones that I use for this particular artwork. It doesn't mean we still don't try hard on line art. Even if we can't see the lines, they're still very important, at least in my opinion. They really help guide the uh, rendering process. So here pretty soon, we're gonna start adding the base colors. And basically I color picked from, um, from my sketch, that way I can kind of make sure I'm matching the, the tones correctly because I felt the sketch really did do a good job of um, the colors so I just kind of color picked from them to kind of help cheat in terms of getting the colors right. Right now it all looks too dark but when it's all put together it makes a lot more sense. You're, you're gonna see me using hue and saturation again to kind of change the colors of the base to kind of fit more of what I want and that is okay. We don't always get it right on our first try, but it is important to keep trying as hard as humanly possible. So now we're getting somewhere. I'm now kind of redrawing the background a bit. The background isn't the main focus, so it's going to be a lot less detail. Um, usually you want more details on where you want people to look and less detail where you don't. It's similar with lighting. If you want the focus to be on the bright parts of the light, you want to add more detail to the light portion while adding less to the darker portion. If you want the darker parts to be the highlight, you want more detail in the darkness and less detail in the highlighted areas. It's all a balance. Um, detail is determined by where you want people to look. Um, this was also an example of it's been happening off screen whenever I haven't been recording, but I've really been practicing rendering clothes, and I feel there's a distinct difference in how I did clothes this time that really works, unlike my previous old artworks. I feel like I'm finally starting to understand clothes, and I cannot wait to share with you what I've learned. I've learned that a lot of it is gradients and blocking out shapes, and shapes are huge, and it's another fundamental to art. So you want to be really studying how to find and correct shapes. So this new rendering style is heavily focused on gradients and soft shading. There, there's not a lot of hard shading except in certain areas. For the most part it's all a focus on softness and blending colors. So you'll notice that we can barely see the details in the hair and that's by design. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate the hair. I want it to kind of just be soft and very almost light and fluffy. Um, and that's super important. Uh, the ears, I feel I could have done better looking back at it, but I definitely corrected and fixed things up later. 
So overall, I'm super satisfied with this one. Um, you'll notice the highlights start off super bright, then I kind of subdue them a bit by turning my airbrush into an eraser by hitting C on my keyboard. So uh, learning shortcuts is super important. I actually uh, think you should learn your, your art program's uh, shortcuts. You'll notice the hair is the only hypersaturated, sorry, not the hair, the eyes are the only hypersaturated part of this artwork. And that's so that they stick out. You'll see later in the post-processing, I had an ad glow to make the uh, eyes glow a bit more. Now, I ended up putting like steam on a window. So there's a lot of uh, little tiny droplets, some rain, and I blur the background because there's supposed to be kind of a steamy window look. And here pretty soon, we're gonna add a whole gradient on top to kind of make it pop more. I put a bit of uh, some basic post-processing with color balance and tonal curve. And I added some foreground um, objects that are like blurred a bit. And now we're doing the post-processing. And there we go, we are pretty much done. There was a few touch-ups that I forgot to record, but overall, here's the finished artwork. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, helps out a whole lot. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.